to episode 22 of the Mini Sculpting Super Show. I'm your host, Tom Mason, and today we're going to talk about what goes into molding your miniatures. This is a very important concept to grasp and to understand. And even though I'm not a master mold maker, I do understand the concepts, and I want to share that with you because it is imperative. If you ever plan to sculpt commercially, freelance, or even just cast your own stuff, you have to understand this. It's super important. I'd like to take a quick moment to thank all my patrons for helping make this show possible. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over there, check it out. And a special thanks to my sponsor, Sculptomo Toys, who is now carrying some really cool uh, Street Fighter action figures and statues. So go on there, check it out. They're actually offering free shipping on all orders right now. And if you use the promo code TMSSS17, you'll get 10% off at checkout. All right. On with the show. So in the past, I talked to you a little bit about how to go about sculpting your miniatures to make them work better uh, for the mold making process. Well, today I'm going to show you the mold making process, at least to the best of my ability. <clears throat> so what you see here in front of us, is, this is a cool little kit that I picked up, gosh, over 10 years ago maybe closer to 15. Anyways, it's been a long time. Uh, it's called the Vulk a mold V U L C A M O L D. And it is an at home drop mold vulcanizing mold kit. I made that way wordier than it needed to be. But anyways, my point, what, what I'm trying to get at is it's not for spin casting. So if I open this up, oops, move these out of the way. <clears throat> you see that it makes this little square mold cavity, which is not designed for spinning. It's going to be a similar kind of mold that you would do uh, if you were doing silicone RTV molding, room temperature vulcanization. But what's cool about this is this uses uh, rubber very similar that you that you would find in typical spin casting, which means you can pour metal into it and it won't get damaged, or at least you know it'll last a long time before anything happens to it. So this is really cool. Uh, the only unfortunate thing about this is that I don't think this little kit is made anymore. But that's not the purpose of the video. It's not to show you how to use this kit specifically. It's to give you an idea of the actual process that goes into making a miniature mold. So this is, I'm going to be using for the mold material, it's um, by Castaldo and I think you can get this from a lot of major suppliers of, of uh, mold rubbers and whatnot, but this is this is uh, specifically Econosil. So it's a silicon mold, but um, that's the brand. Econosil Sil Economy Grade Silicone Jewelry, Jewelry Molding Rubber. It comes in these big, long strips. There you go, that's a better idea. So it comes in these big, long strips. When I first got the kit, it actually came with pre-shaped blocks that were specifically designed to fit into these cavities. But <clears throat> what I'm gonna have to do here is I will take one of these and I will just start to fold it over uh, onto itself into the rough shape to try and fill that cavity. So what I'm gonna do first to prep the Volcomold kit here is I'm gonna spray it with this, uh, again, same company, Maybe this is the website I got it from. I don't think so. I feel like I got it from Contente or something like that. Anyways, but you can look it up. It's just a mold release spray. And I'm gonna spray this on the mold and then dust it with some talcum powder or something similar. Yeah, it's a mold talc powder. And what that will do is it'll just help uh, keep the mold from the rubber getting stuck in any. It'll just help it release a little easier. Uh, so I'm gonna go spray that and do this real quick and then I will show you a little bit about how you need to how a figure goes into the mold and uh, needs to be prepared all right so I've sprayed this with the release spray and then I'm just gonna I got a little container here of the talc and I'm just gonna pad that in here fairly generous because there won't be any details or anything and we just want to make sure that it uh, releases very nice and easily. Okay, I've got the whole mold 
talc and mold release sprayed and I went ahead and uh, folded up it took one of those strips uh, folded one of them in half here and then I've got three layers here just to make sure that there's lots of extra material because um, it will it does need to expand some and, and there's a little bit of a uh, area down underneath to the sides that it's not quite filling in so I just want to make sure that there will be enough material there to mold this. There might be too, a little too much, but that's okay. That's what these little channels are for, and they'll just ooze out. Okay, so the things we're gonna mold here, I'm just gonna mold these simple shield forms here, and they're gonna go, yeah, right here. And with something like this, it's very simple and straightforward. Typically, you can do what's called a press mold, and that's where the figure is just set in between the two pieces of rubber. You want to press it down a little bit just to get it into place, and then you would close the mold together, and that will create your two halves. Easy peasy. Um, but what you're going to encounter a lot with your own miniatures, and this is a figure I did for Reaper. I'm not going to mold this. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just uh, wanted to show you something that had a lot of uh, interesting shapes and angles. So if you look at this guy, if I place him straight down like this, and I press him in a little bit, well what you'll see is he's got some pretty drastic planes where this leg comes up, it's not even within the mold at all, and this one's ankle is is beyond the mold plane here, and what that'll ha have, what will happen there if you just press this in <clears throat> is you can have the mold end up trying to wrap around and, and being trapped in one half rather than the other. And that's no good. We don't want that. You, know, you can see the impression here. Look, at, I mean, that's very deep. So what you have to do and what you should keep in mind, because not all of you are going to be molding yourself. Maybe you will. But you should do this even if you're doing um, silicone drop molds, RTV silicone molds. Keep this in mind. So rather than just setting your guy in, half, half, whatever's there gets stuck, whatever's there gets stuck. You don't want to do that. You want to create a buildup. You want to imagine kind of a center line going through the figure. So for this guy to work, you need the center line to come up along this leg, down here, under and around this arm, back here. You actually want it to go a little bit on the head. You don't want to just do it here because if you just go over the shoulder and then over the neck, well then the head's really it can be trapped up in that top cavity so you need to let it come up here a little bit and then so on and so forth back down the figure the other way and the way you do that is you set it in kind of like we did but not as far and what you would do is, is rather than pressing you could actually cut out some cavities <clears throat> of the mold to you know make room make way for those lower parts and then with that excess you actually start building up the mold behind it, behind those really high areas. And this isn't gonna stick really well because I, I went ahead and got everything talked and, and everything, so we'll have to put this back before we proceed. But as you can see now, just as a quick example, it starts to fill in that void behind. And you would wanna continue to build that up. You know, I could you know, pinch this raise it up even more or ideally go get some more mold rubber from another strip but then when so that you can see now and, and you know I push that part down so that again the mold line would be down it wouldn't wrap a, the mold won't wrap around the foot it will go just along to the middle edge of the leg so as you can see it's I mean it's not super complicated but it is a little tricky and you can't just throw a miniature in a mold and the biggest reason I'm pointing this out and kind of being a little exhaustive on this point is this is something you have to think about when you make a miniature um, this guy is one piece but he's actually he was a little tricky to mold uh, for the mold maker you know he's he's got he's got parts that go pretty deep into the mold this way pretty deep in the mold this way the head specifically is jutting pretty far forward and that can actually sometimes uh, be a little difficult for the caster to uh, get the metal to fill in right unless it's vented, which we'll get to venting here in a little bit. Okay, well I'm gonna 
now that I showed you that, I'm going to go ahead and finish preparing this, uh, these guys to be molded appropriately. All right, the last thing we need to do before closing this up and throwing it in the oven to start cooking the mold is we need to add these little key locks here, um, mold locks. There you go. Mold lock metal formers. So what these do, <clears throat> excuse me, is they help ensure that your mold will stay aligned properly. So you just wanna press, I go ahead and press, I take four of these guys. And oh, this one's stuck together. There we go. And I just like to put one in each corner on these little molds. If you're doing, if this was a larger um, disc mold, you'd have a lot more of these because you would wanna really make sure everything stay nice and perfect but since this is pretty small and it's squared up it's it's very easy to just do that and that will keep it locked up uh, there's one other thing we could do but apparently I've lost it is if you have a preformed gate which is where we'll pour the metal in to feed into both of these um, uh, pieces when we go to cast it is you can press you can put that in here just like that and what that does is that just creates the cavity for the gate so you don't have to cut it out but that's what I'll do uh, after this gets molded I'll just cut a, uh, a form so that's that now it's time to close it up which is harder to do oh I forgot so that is a little too much so I pressed it in in as much as I could to fill in that area but it's still raised above there so actually I need to trim that off so I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and close this up throw it in the oven and once this is molded I will we'll get back on camera and I'll show you how it turned out Well, that opened up a lot easier than I have, think it's ever opened up for me. I must have put plenty of uh, mold release on this thing this time. Normally, it, it's a little more difficult to wedge apart. But anyways, so I've got it out here. Part, I should say. But I still have to get it out of the mold. There's these little, oops, there's these little bits down the edge. I'm going to have to get a knife here. I'm just going to use a... Uh, I don't know what this is called, bread and butter knife or just regular silverware knife. See, it's got these little pieces here, indentions in the mold to help keep it in the frame. But we need to get past that now that we're getting it out. There we go. So it's a very nice, clean mold there. It's just exactly where I wanted it to be. I wanted a little bit of the uh, piece to be in this half of the mold, a little bit in this, so that nothing would end up being trapped. I can just bend this to pop them out. And the last thing we need to do to prep this to be able to cast these is I will need to cut a gate here that I'll pour the metal in and some little vents to, uh, or well, I guess there, there are more gates, just extend the gates into these two pieces so the uh, metal can flow and fill this up. And then I'll cut a few vents because when you're pouring the metal in, there's and when the mold's closed, there's air, obviously, where the pieces were. And so I'll have to cut some little vents that will allow the air to escape as it's filled up with the pewter. So I'm gonna get that ready and I'll show you that real quick. Now this goes without saying, but I haven't said it yet, so I should say it now. Be extremely careful when you're handling this because, especially on this next part, because you will need a very sharp knife in order to cut the secured rubber. It's very tough stuff now. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna press these two pieces together. I just got a Sharpie so that I can kind of draw out the shape of the gate. I want to do. This will just help me guide and make sure I don't get too crazy 
in the, or off on one side versus another. I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger just so it's a little easier to pour in. Okay. You don't have to do this, you can just cut it, but it helps me to uh, get a little bit of a guide. And then I'm gonna have this, let's see, I could either have this go right into the corners here and hopefully fill up, but I've got that big channel right here. So I might, I'm either gonna have it go kind of to there, or I might have it go directly into the center. Let's make two different lines here. Okay, now let's start cutting. All right, so got my gate cut. I decided to put this in the corner because I think that the best way to get this to vent is gonna be to have the metal flowing into here and just let all the air escape out here. This is a sphere, so I'm not as concerned with it. Um, I think it'll, it'll form a little nicer and then I can put a vent you know, just over here to let the air escape. I think that'll work okay. Um, I might need to widen this gate a little more, but we'll find that out. Uh, that'll, that'll come. Uh, in time once we once I do a test of this so next thing you need to do is cut some vents and like I said that's just a little bit it's just an extra uh, passage for the air to escape with and these actually don't even need to be it doesn't even need to be that uh, large not as large as what I did there but I'm an amateur at best so we'll see how I do here this might be large it might be thin <laughs> As long as there's something, it should be okay. Okay, there's one. And I'll do the other one. Gotta do it over far enough that it will not hit the uh, gate there. And you might notice that the way I'm cutting this, I think when I started this one, I was trying to do a rounded cut, but then recalled. Um, one time I was shown that a very simple way to cut these is to just do two kind of 45 degree angle cuts and then you're not trying to round stuff especially when you've got a nice thick blade like that I'll go ahead and cut off these little nubbins just to make the mold look a little nicer okay well there you have it that's how you mold a miniature and uh, a little bit of the you know finishing prep involved um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple castings and show you how they turned out and here are the finished castings took a little bit of I had to do a little bit of adjustments to the mold but I got it there uh, but this isn't you know this is just at home hobby thing you know you definitely I can't stress enough unless you really want to get into mold making and casting it is far better to just reach out to a good mold maker like fortress figures and hire them to do it they can do it faster they can do it better <laughs> and then you can just be sculpting so but it is important to learn how the molds are made and understand that so that you can make the best miniatures you can and with that, remember to keep sculpting.